हेलो व्यूअर्स आई एम डॉक्टर सुमीना चीफ फर्टिलिटी कंसल्टेंट एंड लेप्रोस्कोपिक सर्जन मीरा फर्टिलिटी हैदराबाद इन दिस वीडियो लेट अस टॉक अबाउट इंट्राउट्राइन एडहेशंस एंड एशरमैन सिंड्रोम व्हाट आर इंट्राउट्राइन एडहेशंस द इनसाइड ऑफ द यूट्रस इज लाइक अ बलून विद अ फ्रंट बैक वॉल्स व्हिच लाइ फ्लैट अगेंस्ट ईच अदर द पॉकेट इज लाइंड विद टिश्यू कॉल्ड एज एंडोमेट्रियम ड्यूरिंग मेंस्ट्रुएशन the superficial or top layer of endometrium is shed when a woman becomes pregnant the embryo implants in this endometrium injury or infection of the endometrium may damage the lining causing formation of adhesions or scar tissue between the inner walls of the uterus this scar tissue leads to abnormal adhesions or sticking together of these walls asherman syndrome is a term used to describe adhesions inside the uterus this scarring can be mild with thin stretchy bands of scar tissue or more severe with formation of thick bands in the most severe cases partial or total occlusion or destruction of the inside of the uterine cavity can occur now what are the potential causes of asherman syndrome the most common cause of intrauterine adhesions is injury following a surgical procedure involving the cavity of uterus such as dilatation and curettage now dilatation or curettage or dnc is a common outpatient surgical procedure during which the cervix is stretched and the tissue contents of the uterus are removed uterine adhesions may follow may form following a dnc performed for pregnancy complications and it can also form after dnc done for abnormal uterine bleeding other less common possible causes of adhesion formation are infections of the uterine lining that is endometritis surgical removal of fibroids in the cavity of uterus cesarean sections and endometrial ablation that is a surgical procedure that is used to intentionally damage the uterine lining to make menstrual periods lighter or eliminate them entirely what are the symptoms associated with asherman syndrome a woman with intrauterine adhesions may have no obvious problems or symptoms many women however may experience menstrual abnormalities such as absent light or infrequent periods other women may be unable to achieve pregnancy or may experience recurrent miscarriages they may also experience complications at the time of delivery due to abnormal implantation of the placenta if the scar tissue partially or completely blocks the menstrual blood flow asherman syndrome can cause pelvic pain or painful menstrual periods how do you diagnose asherman syndrome asherman syndrome can be diagnosed by hysteroscopy hysterosalpingogram or hsg or saline sonohistogram hysteroscopy is the most accurate method to evaluate intrauterine adhesions and it is a procedure in which a thin lighted telescope like instrument is inserted through the cervix to allow the doctor to see directly inside the uterus it can be performed in the office or may be done in the operating room hsg and sono histogram are also useful screening tests for intrauterine adhesions hsg is an x-ray procedure during which a dye that can be seen on x-ray is infused into uterine cavity so that the shape of the inside of the uterus can be seen during a saline sono histogram a salt water solution similar to normal body fluid is infused through the cervix into the uterus under sonogram machine or an ultrasound machine is used to see the uterine cavity in both hsg and shg shg the adhesions are seen as filling defects spaces where the fluid does not flow freely these office based procedures do not require anesthesia although 
tablets to reduce pain such as NSAIDs may be used. How is Asherman syndrome treated? Surgical treatment of intrauterine adhesions with hysteroscopic guidance is recommended. A special operating hysteroscope is used to cut the scar tissue. This is frequently done under anesthesia, but in some cases may be performed in an office with mild sedative. Following cutting of adhesions, many surgeons recommend temporarily placing a device such as plastic catheter or balloon inside the uterus to keep the walls of the uterus apart and to decrease the chances of adhesions reforming. Hormonal treatment with estrogen and sometimes NSAIDs and antibiotics are often prescribed after the surgery to further reduce the chances that, that the adhesions will return. In severe cases, it may be necessary to have more than one surgery to remove the adhesions and sometimes office hysteroscopy is used instead of balloon as a treatment to help maintain a normal cavity. Are there any long-term issues that you need to be concerned about? Even after treatment, some patients continue to have difficulty with the amount of menstrual bleeding. Pregnancies that occur after treatment are more likely to be complicated by miscarriages, preterm labor, third trimester bleeding, or abnormal attachment of the placenta. The chances of successful pregnancy after treatment correlates with the type and extent of adhesions. After treatment, patients with mild to moderate adhesions usually experience return of normal menstrual function and have a successful full-term pregnancy. But patients with severe adhesions or extensive destruction of the endometrial lining may have full-term pregnancy rates of only 20 to 40 percent or even lower. Women with extensive damage to the endometrium that does not improve after treatment may consider other options such as adoption or IVF using a gestational surrogate where another woman carries the pregnancy for the mother using the patient's eggs. I hope you got the information you needed to know about intrauterine adhesions or Asherman syndrome. If you have any more doubts, please write to us. For any information regarding women's health or fertility, do like, share and subscribe to our channel. Thank you.